Hey friends, this video is talking about a, a subject that I find very interesting and it is really based around the psychology of really goal setting in the fitness realm, uh, the sports psychology if you will. And I got to learn this this piece through Dr. Uh, Dr. Israel. So this is all his creation and it really hit home for me and I wanted to share with you guys and it's uh, talking about the constructs of adherence. So when we think of starting a new goal, you know, here as a fitness coach at Wheelhouse, I often think about people setting strength goals, people setting, sometimes it's weight loss goals, sometimes it's muscle gain goals, uh, but whatever it is, they're trying to get into a habit. Sometimes people are setting goals by just coming to a gym because uh, they're starting from day one. They've never really been a part of a gym. You know, in, in the back of my head, I would always, as a, as a coach, I would for years always think about how do I make this process something that is less intimidating, is something that um, they can want to come, be motivated to come, be inspired to come, and give them a flight path to success, a growth track to success, give them an actual game plan for them to carry out. Sometimes it would work, and then obviously with our membership, as, as if you're listening to this and you're a member of Wheelhouse, something made you come back, right? So whether it's uh, just the welcomeness vibe of being a very inclusive community to just uh, the hard workouts leaving you wanting to challenge yourself even more. But, you know, the fact of the matter is, is not everyone sticks around, and especially during the New Year's resolution time. So as we, we were in this time of goal setting, of seeing new members come to the gym, and then really marching forward to creating this challenge, this gym-wide challenge that I'll, I'll talk about later, really wanted to dive back to these notes that I got to learn from Dr. Israel talking about his constructs of adherence. I'll kick off first where, you know, we talk about what is adherence, you know, and adherence really is, he says it's everything or almost everything, but it's your success is really based around your ability to adhere to a plan, whatever it is, and adhere to it, stick to it, and then uh, let the process work. There are awesome diet approaches out there. There are awesome strength training approaches out there and awesome conditioning programs out there that's going to get you to get where you want to be so often the answer isn't in the differences between those programs if you look at those programs they're probably about 80 maybe even 90 percent similar to one another it's that 10 20 percent where they differ in branding and approach i think that's where people really sweat too much and try to focus on doing exactly that but they leave out the, the, the bulk of it. They leave out that, that 80% that's gonna work. So basically, if you're on a pretty sound program and pretty sound uh, eating approach, the process is what's gonna get you the results. We fine tune and tweak the process later, but that's in the later constructs of, um, of adherence. So we're gonna talk about six steps, if you will, as someone goes through these six constructs of adherence. The first step being inspiration. We've all been there. We've all been inspired, whether it's by a movie, whether it's by a, a quote that you read, or whether it's by even an Instagram influencer. I hate to say it, but it is what it is nowadays. And um, so what is inspiration? Inspiration is that spark that gets you to want to start. It is that, man, you saw Rocky, or you saw Creed, and all of a sudden you walk out of that movie feeling that you're bulletproof and you just want to outbox your friends. Maybe you're shadow boxing them in the in the driveway and, and you're talking about how cool it would be to, to take boxing lessons or be able to know how to throw hands. But that inspiration doesn't really last long. <laughs> the next day you don't show up at a boxing gym. You know, it was a cool topic to talk about for a few hours and maybe even a few minutes. And that's kind of the good and bad of inspiration. What is it good for? It's that key that gets you started. It's that spark that often leads to other thoughts uh, to get you wanting to do and pursue. So it's very important for that, but it's horrible for any kind of long-term sustaining drive. You know, it dies out really quickly. And we've, we've all experienced that. I've been inspired to 
play guitar because I'll see, um, you know, a, a dad singing with his daughter, and I'm like, man, I want to learn how to play guitar, and I get so inspired. But the next day, I never, I don't go out, and uh, I'm not motivated to go out to buy a guitar or take lessons. So my inspiration to play guitar or that instrument is really dies out. But it's key, so we want to talk about how to boost it. I think boosting it is important because there's going to go th we're going to go through these constructs and we want to know learn how to continue that so that next time we're faced with inspiration again how do we keep it around a little longer one way is being around it like-minded people it's going to be very tough if you were the only person in your sphere of influence uh, that thinks this way i think another way that boosts inspiration is seeing what you could have done. For example, transformation pictures, before and after photos, uh, testimonials that you hear about, that you see. Uh, maybe it's the person that works out right next to you and you don't realize, whoa, this is where they come from. Hearing their story, seeing that they transformed and saying, I'm, I kind of fit that mold. I, I am inspired as well, you know? I get in inspired if I see other dads who are my age, who are just rocking out and starting their journey, or maybe they've been on their journey for a while and I'm inspired to do that. I'm inspired by you guys as I coach you and I myself haven't been training regularly I, I see and I get to hear your struggles and hear of it being around like-minded people but then also seeing the transformation that we get to see week in and week out and then oftentimes another way to boost inspiration is realizing what we can do but also realizing what we can't do this happens a lot whenever I meet with people through a consultation they'll sit down with me and they'll share that man I've, I had to walk up four flights of stairs because the elevator broke at my work and I was more winded than I care to admit or maybe they do their first two trial workouts here at wheelhouse they were just they started to really feel it in round two and it's a five round workout and maybe they had to cut it short so it could often be what they can do, but sometimes what they can't do. If you're following along, the graph's gonna show you guys what inspiration looks like on a graph where one axis is the level of adherence and the other axis is a, a timeline of how long it lasts. And you'll see that inspiration is, this, is the red bar that um, will really get you pumped up, but it really spikes back down and it doesn't last long at all. The second construct of, of uh, adherence would be when inspiration turns into motivation. Motivation, the difference here is that inner desire to want to start. So in, inspiration gave you the image, it gave you the idea. Motivation is that inner desire to say, you know what, I'm going to pick up the phone. I want to go out and um, start researching gyms, start reading Google reviews, start talking to neighbors about who trains where and what works for me and what works for them. It really, it's, it's your own self-desire to want to go. So what's it good for? It is needed to, to feel your adherence um, after your inspiration dies. What's it bad for? It's bad for daily support. It waxes and it wanes. It is peaks and valleys. And these peaks and valleys can be monthly, can be weekly, they can be daily. It can even be hourly, where one minute you're like, let's go, and then the next minute you've kind of ran into a, a mental block and you're just not ready to go yet. So. How do we boost motivation? One of the, the main things is having objective parameters to boost in motivation. You've got to have a clear end goal. It doesn't work well if you say, I'm motivated to get strong. We got to put objective parameters around that. So it needs to say, I'm motivated to deadlift 150 50 pounds by April. And I'm going to do so by training on Mondays, Wednesdays, and Fridays at the 1130 class. So it needs those parameters, right? One, another thing to boost motivation is oftentimes we want to avoid unrealistic goals because we can have them too. And I talk to many people, they, they share with me their goals. And in my opinion, they're a, a bit unrealistic. A guy who wants to achieve X, but his fitness level isn't quite where it needs to be to even think about achieving X uh, you know it's it's it would be great just to get them consistent consistently working out four times a week because that's the minimum of what it where it takes so that's what I mean by unrealistic realistic goals uh, maybe it's just a season where it's just not right you know there's he's got a newborn he's not sleeping right now work is stressful and they are understaffed and it's just not realistic for them to put all these eggs in the basket uh, going for being Mr. Olympia, right? Another thing is uh, to boost motivation is to share with positive people, you know, being around them, but then sharing and sharing with people who's going to hold you accountable, who's going to understand your journey and what, what it's about to take. Boosting motivation could also mean overcoming your temptations where 
you're tempted to often skip the gym, go to happy hour. You're tempted to often have a different drink instead of the water that you're trying to take in for the meal. When you overcome those temptations, you should definitely celebrate those wins. Which is the last one, which is owning your positive results and letting that sink in. Uh, celebrate those PRs. You're gonna go through a lot of them. And oftentimes, it could be a little, little mentally detrimental to, to, to what you're trying to do if you did hit a PR trying to get to 150 pounds of your deadlift and when you first came in you were deadlifting 100 and then today we had a retest and you only and you pulled 115 you could look at it as man i'm awesome i am 15 pounds closer to my goal and it's i've been training for a month whatever it is you could also look at it as i suck I only pulled 115, 150 is so far away. You can look at it both ways, right? But having that own, own, ownness of it and looking at your positive results is uh, definitely needed to help you go through motivation. So following on the graph, you'll see that motivation is that yellow curve that waxes and wanes and it, it's peaks and it valleys and it goes up and down. Um, oftentimes, uh, being at the same level, lasting longer than inspiration, but we have to combat that to know that we move to our third level, intention. Intention is the commitment to execute a plan. It is having that plan. It's having that roadmap. It is that I wanna get stronger by X date and I want it to look like this and how am I gonna get there? I'm gonna train this many times. I'm gonna to, to stick to these macros. I'm gonna take this supplement. I'm gonna do this, I'm gonna do that. And having it all mapped out. I'm gonna tell my neighbor, my friend, my, my, my training buddy that this is my goal. So those are all pieces of your plan. It is great for setting up clear what to do and even what not to do. You know, I'm not going to do my usual fast food break uh, four nights a week. I'm not gonna do my usual happy hour that I always hit up on this night and this night. I'm gonna really stick to this plan for the next few months. So without the intention, your goals are just flat out wishes and they fall pretty flat, you know? And Dr. Isertol says that goals by themselves are pretty cheap. Anyone can say that they have a goal of winning the Olympia, but um, without intentionality, they're just words. The bad thing is that they don't enforce themselves and that you gotta know that there's gonna be hard times and you have to work to really work hard to meet your intention so you're prepared for when motivation dips. So how do we boost it? We gotta know that there is some wiggle room, but not much, but allow yourself some wiggle room. Allow yourself to know that there's gonna be times when in your journey of three months, you might miss a meal. In a journey of, of all these months, you might have a, a night where you don't quite get to bed as early as you want to, right? So you gotta have some grace and know that that wiggle room is built in and uh, there's gonna be some slippage so that you just don't beat yourself up and uh, do the negative mindset that we're talking about. Rely on your coach and your gym partners, we talked about that. Those are some ways to boost intentionality and the characteristics of intentionality. On the graph, the visual of the graph is intentionality is that dotted blue line. It's, it's not constant because there's gonna be some, some hard times in there. Uh, there's gonna be some times that we miss. So that's why the, the dashed blue lines, but over over majority of it, it is pretty constant. There's more line than there are dashes. That moves us to the fourth construct, which is discipline. Now discipline is the use of willpower to get us to meet our intentions. Discipline is when we recognize, man, I do not wanna go. It's where I don't want to roll out of bed. It is rainy, it is cold, this bed is comfy, and I am sore. That is your willpower when you need to dig into your willpower and grind and say, I've got to get my ass up and commit to this game plan. What's it good for? It's for closing the gaps when motivation isn't there. Willpower is not sustainable. It will run out quickly. Good thing is, is it's like a power meter. If The more you practice it, the more you get better at it. The more you do it, the more it will rejuvenate and you'll have the ability to grind again. Those who know how to grind are pretty good at grinding and they can do it. And it takes more and more to stop them from doing it. You know, they're gonna find a way. And that's because it's like a muscle that they train. And so you gotta do the same. You know, the, the, the guys who really work on willpower are the ones that I know that they know that they left their gym bag at home or they know that they left their workout shoes at home, but they come anyway. They come in and say, hey coach, do you have an extra pair of socks? Do you have an extra uh, you know, pair of shorts I can borrow? Can I work out barefooted? They're gonna make it happen. Um, others who aren't really relying on that willpower, and it's not quite that, that, uh, that resource, that internal resource that they're relying on, they're gonna say, oh, I forgot this, 
let me just get a U-turn and head home. How do we boost it? Knowing that there's going to be hard times and not letting it surprise you and getting ready to prepare for that emergency. Again, accountability with people is a great way to boost discipline. Uh, music is another way to do, boost mis discipline. You always have that hype song that you re refer to and you just can turn that on at the right time whenever you don't want to do your last sets. Another piece that's important to discipline is having built-in deloading if you're on a string cycle. Having built-in celebratory cheat meals if you're on a long haul of your diet. Having um, a maintenance plan where you're not just cutting, 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 cutting calories, but you're maintaining calories for the time being. It's no different than having a vacation to look forward to if you've been doing nothing but working or a rest day when your body's just completely beat up and just uh, treating yourself. I think those are important for recovery and from your mental state. And then another way is to keep in mind that you gotta practice it. Willpower, it, you know, exerting willpower and to, to letting it recharge, you gotta practice it because the more you do it, the better you'll be at it. Discipline on a chart will look like the purple valleys, right? The, the purple spots where motivation has died down. And again, you dug in deep here to keep the intentionality and rely on your willpower to get you out of those, of those uh, valleys when it waxes and wanes. Eventually, things hit the fifth construct, which is habit. And habit is that automation of training, that automation of dieting, that automation of consistency in the gym. We are relying less and less on our motivation and our motivation valleys are not so deep anymore. They're, they're gonna dip, they're still gonna dip, but they just get a little sh less and less, or more and more shallow, right? Less and less deep. So what's it good for? It's uh, great for creating less of a demand for discipline, so less of a demand for willpower. And uh, which really, you know, increases your adherence abilities. Here, when you reach the habitual stage, things skyrocket. This is where adherence becomes long-term. Things are just, you, you don't need motivation anymore. You know, habits like brushing your teeth every morning. You don't need motivation to wake up and brush your teeth every morning, you know. And actually, you probably have to really, really work hard to wake up, do your routine, and purposefully not brush your teeth. It, it, it would feel weird. Habit is where it's just part of the fabric that makes you, you. It, uh, it's just part of your day. These are the people who, who they're not really motivated anymore. They just kind of do it, you know? This is that guy or gal that, that wakes up and just goes running every morning just because that's just what they do, right? However, habit, it doesn't, it does not guarantee that you're necessarily in love with the process. A lot of people have fall into the habit stage. It doesn't mean that you love it. So how do we boost this habit phase? Keeping the plan constant, meaning keeping your training times pretty constant majority of the time. Keeping your training volume pretty constant. Keeping your meal prep times and meal prep meals constant it's a uh, that jumping and varying approaches too often too quick too soon and not let, letting anything settle in and not letting the process work as where habit will kind of um not become a habit you know you've you're trying to figure out too many things and, and jump ship too soon also not burning out with too much volume and frequency or not burning out with um with any of those things that that just make habit unsustainable and then know that this takes time you know habit takes a good four to six weeks to really become a habit. And so that's why we always say to aim towards that five week mark, that sweet spot. So on a scale, habit is that green wave that waxes and wanes, but you start to see what it does is it takes the, the motivation wave and it starts to increase the positive ones and starts to decrease and make the the, uh, the valleys more and more shallow. The sixth and final construct is passion. Passion is where you have a full love for the process. Passion is where you start to really tweak things. Um, passion is where you reach your genetic potential. Passion is where you love the process so much and this is where you, you play and you tweak and you fine tune. It's no longer about worrying and am I going to struggle to do my training in or my or, or, or my, my dieting in. That's already a part of your fabric. It's already become habit. Passion is where you love it so much, the climb if you will, where you've already reached a top of one mountain, you've already reached one goal. It's it's more about the journey. So then you, you tweak your process, you tweak your plan, your intentionality changes. Maybe you, you change the type of, of lifting you're doing, or maybe just the volume or the program you're doing. Um, maybe you start tweaking your macronutrients and start playing with that. That's the example of passion. It's it's for it's great for fueling your adherence to high levels. You unlock your genetic potential. We talked about that. The bad side is it could take months, if not years, to get to passion. 
passion. Some people never get to the passionate phase, and that's okay. You don't have to. We talked about inspiration lasting minutes, and then we talked about now passion is something that could take a lifetime. How do we boost it? Surrounding ourselves with like-minded people. People who are also passionate about the process. Passion, they, they, they share the same passion as you, and they too have tweaked and played, and then you guys can start to compare notes on what that looks like and what's worked for you and what's worked for them. Definitely avoid burnout. You know, sometimes passions can become, people can just completely walk away from their passion. So knowing when to back off and take breaks, a lot of sort of what we've learned in the habits phase. And then another way to keep it fresh is to keep it fresh. Potentially you're exploring new approaches. Maybe if it's just training you're passionate about, fitness that you're passionate about, maybe on the side you know what works, maybe on the side you can do a different type of programming or you add yoga in or you add some add some 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 boxing in or some some martial arts or jiu-jitsu in. Maybe you you just have been running to your gym all the time and maybe you decide to bike or rollerblade or whatever it is that uh, you can get to just tweak things a bit um, so that it keeps it fresh. So, and then on the graph, passion is that dark green line that, ta uh, that picks up where habit has left off and you can see can climb and climb infinitely. In, as a strength coach, you know, as, as a fitness coach, I, you, we talk about motivation, passion, discipline, willpower, intentionality, habit, uh, being consistent. We use them all the time. But whenever I first saw this, it really helped put in the pieces in order of these constructs and then also see how one affects the other and is, is driving uh, you towards that five and six level phase. Hopefully, whenever you start a new passion project, you can see yourself and feel yourself go through all these phases. And uh, I hope it has helped. It will help you out as much as it has helped me out in my life, helped me coach others in their goals in the fitness world. So thanks so much for listening and we will talk to you soon.